Hey everyone, I want to give you the update for the uh, large grow tent and show you how the tomatoes are doing as well as the peppers and then some of the changes I'm going to be doing to this tent probably this weekend. All right, so we can see the, uh, the peppers here, they're still on their regrow phase. They're doing okay. Um, some of them back there are doing really well in their regrow coming back and they've got some flowers opening up on them. And then you know back there there's some. And so there's going to be a change. So these tomatoes are uh, growing very well, but I'm going to pick one off here and show you something that is happening with some of these because I'm using these uh, grow tubs and it's not as easy as I'd like to be able to get in here and remember to water all these and to get the exact watering I want. Unless I set up some kind of a automatic watering system, it's kind of hard to actually get back in there and do a soil moisture test with trying to not break off the grow, you know, the new growth with the flowering heads before I uh, actually can get back in there to test the soil to see how wet it is. But because of that, something that happens to tomato plants is you will get blossom end rot. As you can see, without having watering, when it needs it, as it needs it, if it dries out, it's gonna cause it to get stressed and you'll get blossom end rot. That's just one of the symptoms of blossom end rot. There are other, uh, you know, lacks of like uh, accessibility to uh, magnesium, that type of thing can also cause blossom end rot. But uh, so what I'm planning on doing is since I haven't seen any at all on this one that's potted and I never have had blossom end rot inside my indoor grows for tomatoes when I use my uh, grow bags. So I've got the big, you know, uh, 10 gallon grow bags and I've never had any issues with those growing in there but on these I've picked off a few I picked off two you can see there's the, the flower head area where I picked one of the blossom end rot off of that one as you can see there's one on this one here that I just picked off so what I'm gonna do this weekend is I'm gonna cut out all these it was a nice little wintertime experiment just to play with but uh, I'm gonna cut them out give back those beds for now to the peppers and then uh, I'm gonna leave this tomato plant here on the end because I haven't had any blossom end rot on that one and I haven't had any on this one the reason is is because it's you know early February I've got about a month before I need to start planting all of my outdoor grow tomatoes eggplants uh, stuff like that and then you know later on in the season as it gets closer to June about three weeks before then I'll have all my seeds going in for my uh, squash my cucumbers my beans I like to give those a head start before they go into the soil because we have the slug pressure over here in the northwest. And then uh, it'll give more room for this pepper plant. You can see it's got a lot of a lot of red peppers that are forming now that I put it inside this, this grow tent here with the uh, CMH, the ceramic metal hydride lights. It seems to really like that. And it's got a lot of new growth coming off on the side here. You can see there's more peppers down there. So I really like the growth of this pepper. And so I saved some of the seeds from one of these that we harvested uh, about two weeks ago. And so I'm going to be planting some more of those inside this grow tent, probably, I'd say, end of summer. So that way, by December, we should have production on the plants inside this tent that'll be about that size. So we'll have some nice uh, peppers coming in because I'm not going to grow those pepper plants back there again because they're just too finicky. They get, uh, you know, they get to a good size, then they get, you know, wilty. They start getting some yellowing on the leaves. I try to help them, give them some more nutrients in the soil. They don't, they sometimes take it up. They grow pretty good, but I don't know. They're just, they're just not meant to be grown indoors, I believe. And they, uh, you know, I could sit there and futz around with them if I wanted to, but for the amount of yield I'm getting, I really just don't care. I, <laughs> I'd rather grow something that's gonna be happier in the tent, like these kind of peppers here. These seem to love it. And I've got these, uh, you know, these CMH lights, and I'm gonna probably take out that bench this winter. That way I can have these pepper plants I'll put a bunch of those inside of here, put my bigger tomato cages around them, like these, and I'll let them grow in the back. And then I'll probably also do some more tomatoes, like these down here, these deterministic ones, and have them grow along the back like I did probably about two years ago inside this tent. And that'll be my uh, grow medium for uh, the vegetables for this next coming winter. So, exciting things coming. Sad to see some things, some things go away from the tent, but you know, that's, that's the part of gardening that you gotta, you gotta take in is because you know, you're not gonna always have successes. And I do believe in always showing you my failures because that way you can learn from it as well as I can learn from it. And uh, we learn together. 
All right, guys. This has been Brian from PMB Homesteading. Talk to you again. Bye.